So hello, hey, so have you ever wondered, how, how do I play these? How do I play these drums? I want to make a beat. I want to make this thing work. So I'm going to show you the very first rock beat that almost everybody learns right off the, the top. This is the number one rock beat. In fact, it is called the beat. It's found in thousands, tens of thousands, 20 of thousands, rock, pop, blues songs. Okay, so uh, what is the beat? The beat, quote marks, the beat is this. I'm sure you've all heard that. Maybe you've heard it a little faster. Let's let's bump this speed up. Two. All right, maybe that makes it more recognizable. All right, so let me break it down for you and show it to you. And it's my pleasure. My name is Tom. I am uh, here at Thrive Drumming, thrivedrumming.com, and this is the last video in my series of free videos to help get beginner drummers started, and for anybody who wants to come back in and, and watch those first several videos that we did um, that featured, um, talked about how to hold the sticks, how to strike the drum, what type of tones we can get out of the drum, and we also discussed how to use the pedals. And today, I'm putting this all together and talking about using the drum set, using these skills we just learned, and putting this beat together, breaking it down for you so that here in our final video, you can say you can play the drums, all right? So let's talk about these drums first. How, how come I have them organized the way I do? So again, going back to my video on using pedals, I discussed that I don't like having the bass drum, or I prefer not to have the bass drum straight in front of me. If it were straight in front of me, it would be right here. I have it off to my right, because that is naturally how my legs fall when I sit on my drum throat. So because my right leg and my left leg are spread out, the bass drum is naturally, should be, makes more sense for it to be offset to the right. And I will end up with a much happier hip and back because of that. All right, and I'm seated properly. I'm seated nice and straight. I'm not too far from the snare drum, and that is be important because, as you can see, there are drums that are past the snare drum, and I don't want them too far out, and I don't want to have to reach like that for them. They are all within my reach, and they are comfortable, and that is really our goal when we set up. We want comfort. We want to be able to strike these things, these beautiful instruments, without too much difficulty. So hi-hat is not towering up here. It's at a good height. And my ride cymbal is comfortable for me. It's angled this way, coming right back down at me. It's not angled too far up. And the, the crash cymbals are really a personal preference. Many people today are angling them so that they are that. that you know, the place where you hit them here on the edge is tilted up. Again, that's a per personal preference, um, but you can either have them flat, you can have them angled in towards you a little bit, you can have them angled up. Um, that, that again, it's okay. But put them within reach. Uh, even if they're up high, you can reach them. Okay, I don't like to uh, need to do that right now for any particular reason. So my, my symbols are placed within range, and I can reach them easily, all of them. I play a lot of cymbals with my right hand, so I have a lot of cymbals over here, and I have less cymbals with my left hand, because my left hand is busy doing stuff on the snare drum. So my right hand, since I'm right-handed, it's going to do a lot more patterns that we're going to learn on these cymbals. And it's also going to be, since I am right-handed again, I tend to strike crashes. Um, I emphasize certain accents a little bit more with my right hand. Um, and it's something that I work on continually and will eventually move symbols over here and I'll play with my left hand more. Okay, so let's get back to the beat and let me show you, since we just talked about symbol setup, let's bring this back in and dissect that beat. Okay. 
this beat consists of two notes in the bass drum pattern, which fall on the first and the third beat. So how do we even know it's the first and the third beat and not the 17th beat and the 64th beat? Well, when we listen to music, we hear a pulse in it. And we put it in a nice orderly fashion and we, the first beat, the strongest beat is beat one and the beats that follow, follow after it are numbered and they are simply numbered in order. One, two, three, four. Since that's uh, pretty much where most musicians, that's where we stop counting. That's a joke. Okay, we just go to four. We'll talk about why we have four beats in a measure in further lessons. But for now, it's four beats because it's a nice cycle. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Most of our music that we listen to is in what's called four beats to the measure, four, four, or common time. All right, so that's what we're using for this pattern. Bass drum's on one, and it's on three. So what's going to be on beats two and four? Well, that's going to be our, our snare drum. So our bass drum is here. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to put the snare drum in those spots opposite the bass drum. One, two, three, four. One, three, four. One, three, four. All right, so let's use the wrist strokes that we learned in our second lesson on how to hit the drum. And we're going to learn a lot of other techniques as time goes on. But let's just start with the wrist stroke. So we're going to use that wrist stroke to hit two and four. One, two, three, four. Now, you're going to see me keep my snare drum stick down. Why would I do that? Because this hand's going to be over top. And if I bring it back up, it's going to be in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike two and four and leave it down and then pick it up just before and I'll bring this one out of the way a lot of the time. Or you can leave this stick back a little bit so you have room to make this motion. Or you can bring it forward. Okay, So, bass drum on one, snare drum on two and four, bass drum on, the bass drum is on beats one and three, the snare drum is on beats two and four. Put those together, we get Pretty cool, right? For slow music, we can feel a nice pocket there. If we want to speed it up, then we can start to groove and dance and move a little bit. So let's do it a little faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we want to put some icing on this cake. We just built a nice two-layer cake, all right? I don't know what flavor you like. Some people like yellow cake. Some people like, you know, other flavors. I'm a, fa I'm, a, I'm a fan of chocolate cake, so we're building a chocolate cake, and now we need to put some icing on it. All right, so let's put our icing, and our icing is going to be over here. We're going to put some flavor on here. We're going to sprinkle that beat with what we call, now we understand where the bass drum and the snare drum are, so let's add something for our right hand to do. And we're going to leave our left foot out of it for right now. So our right hand, for, for now, maybe it's going to be wiser. For now, it's probably a better choice to use the ride symbol. So let's put the right hand over here to the ride symbol. Please don't reach over reach. You want to keep it still. It's pretty comfortable. I'm not extending, overextending my arm. It's really still pretty much hanging loosely by my body. And as I need to strike the symbol, it's going to hit right here in the nice playing area. Now what we're going to do, we talked about there being four beats in a measure. One, two, three, four. On every count, the one, the two, the three, the four, we're going to need to double the strokes on this cymbal. So in musical terms, we call those eighth notes. We called the other beats that we played quarter notes. So the number four, if we multiply it by two, since we're going to play twice as many, would be eight. So that's why we have quarter notes 
and I'm pointing at the bass drum because that the bass drum is playing one and three, and the snare drum's on two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now I could do that over here to play all four quarter notes. One. But this beat uses twice as many as that. It's twice as fast, and we're going to call those eighth notes. And the way that we count them in our traditional um, American musical culture is we count them as one and, two and, three and, four and. And you could count all those up. That was eight beats, eight eighth notes. One and, two and, three and, four and. All right, and I'm going to put the bass drum on beats one and beats three. I'll do all three together, and then we'll break down how you can work on this so that it's not such a challenge at first, so that we are successful in this, and you can work on it and, and do it very quickly, um, get this up and running, and have fun, and want to do more of it. Okay, so um, I'm going to demonstrate first. Two, three, and four, and... Okay, so one way you can do this is give it a shot and try it all together. Try it all at once. Do it much slower. This hand is going to play twice as fast as the feet. The right foot and the left hand are doing beats one, two, three, four. And the right symbol is twice as fast. So let's take this pattern that's going twice as fast and just play one of these other elements against that. So let's get this going and keep it going. And when we're comfortable with it, we're going to bring in, let's start with the bass drum. We're going to bring in the bass drum on beats one and three. All right, I'll even break it down further for you if that is a challenge. Well, let's give it a whirl. Two, three, and four, and. Two, three, four, one. Two, bass drum, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If that is a challenge, just try playing the first bass drum note. Just put it on beat one and leave the rest of it out till that gets comfortable. When you are comfortable with just putting the bass drum on beat one, then add in the next bass drum note on beat three. So it would be like this. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two. That feels comfortable. Time to concentrate and get the second bass drum in. Uh, the second bass drum note in on beat three. Three, four, one, two, three, four. First one. One, two, three, four, two, three. I'm going to add the next one. Two, four, two, four. All right. When you have that together, set the, take the right leg, uh, take a rest for a while. So have the right leg rest for a while. And now let's work on getting the snare drum on two and four. Same thing, keep this going and get the snare drum on the proper beats. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That becomes comfortable for you, then it's time to try to put them all together. I would suggest, since we're going to hit the bass drum first, you might just get the first two beats, the first the first bass drum and the snare drum. It's okay you, if you leave beats three and four out in your right foot and your left hand. You could just do this: three and four and one, two, 
get comfortable add in the next bass drum note on beat three so we have this one two three four one two three four one two three next bass drum one two three up okay so eventually we will get the whole beat put together all right here we go i'm going to play it out i'm going to play it fast and I'm going to move up this metronome to give you an idea of what the beat feels like. Let's play it at 100, 100 beats per minute. Awesome. All right. I really hope you enjoyed that. I hope you um, will get this beat together. It will come together for you. Uh, you can certainly uh, get in touch with me by email. You can put comments in on the video, and I would be happy to answer them for you. And again, I, it's been my pleasure to show you these five videos, how to hold the sticks, how to strike the drum, different sounds we can make on just one drum, using our feet on the pedals, and also putting it all together. All right, so it's been my pleasure. And again, this is Tom at Thrive Drumming. And if you are interested in continuing learning from me, I am available to teach online. And again, my pleasure.